Good morning. God is good. And all the time. Amen. Let's do it one more time for especially those new folks that are visiting with us. God is good. And all the time. Amen. Welcome to Morton United Methodist Church. We're so glad that you are here in worship this morning with us. It is a wonderful day to be together in worship and be from Morton. We got a witness. He's ready to go. Just this week, I think an article came out, Morton is like one of the best places to live in the country. Right? Somebody wants to say second best. I'm just going to say one of the best. And yesterday was proof in the pudding. I got to go to the junior high school play, Beauty and the Beast, and we had at least four participants from our congregation, youth of ours, who participated in it. It was marvelous. Can we give them a hand for what they've done? And the parents and the community that supports them. Um, Lydia Greeter, Cameron Shook, Sarah Weaver, Caroline Potts all played wonderful roles and had a great time. You could just tell there was a lot of energy on the stage. And it was Gary, Pastor Gary and I, we were in awe. And my son Hudson, he's six and a half, he was moved to laughing and moved to tears. It was wonderful. They did a fabulous job. Today, there is a district leadership event being held at Crossroads United Methodist Church. As United Methodists, we are part of districts, and the districts make up our conference. And so our district is going to focus on some areas for leadership and training. Everyone is invited to come. Uh, There's a little pamphlet I have about it. So if you see me after church, I can give you more information. You can see that in your bulletin or even find it online. It's from 2 to 5.30 today up at Crossroads Methodist Church, uh, just off of 24 up there. There is a youth chili sub fundraiser coming into the building next week for Super Bowl Sunday. So if you're going to celebrate Super Bowl Sunday at all and you'd like a sub or some chili, you can also celebrate missions and outreach from our youth. And they go down to Texas this coming summer to help in the hurricane relief. So please connect with the youth. There's a sign-up sheet on Eric's office door as you go out that way uh, toward the exit. And you may even see a youth or two running around the building with a clipboard. So find them and sign up. Next month, believe it or not, Ash Wednesday is Valentine's Day on the 14th. The day before Lent starts on Tuesday, we're going to have a Fat Tuesday meal here at the church. Because we won't be having watch night meal during Lent on that first week on Ash Wednesday. So 5 to 6.30, Fat Tuesday, come have pancakes and sausage and sausage biscuits and gravy and all the good stuff and let's get ourselves all plumped up with car- high carbohydrates as we enter into Lent and, uh, and celebrate. We'll have some fun and games and just good fellowship before we uh, become very somber and remember our humanity uh, the following day and we'll have Ash Wednesday services here at the church. Pastor Gary and I and all other pastors of the Illinois Great Rivers Conference will be attending a conference down in O'Fallon for the next two days on Monday and Tuesday called Covenant Keepers. We come together to worship and to pray and to continue to prepare ourselves uh, in the presence of the Lord and one another as pastors. And so uh, Paul Wallace will be leading our Tuesday morning uh, communion service. If you'd like to come, it's at 8 o'clock here in the sanctuary uh, that will continue and we covet your prayers uh, as we travel and fellowship with one another. Last but not least, in the middle of the, the announcement sheet in your bulletin, the United Methodist men work to connect with different ministry opportunities throughout the year and with each other. One of the ways they raise money is through the Kroger Rewards Program. And so if you would like to have your shopping go toward even another benefit other than your cabinet and cupboard at home, you can have your rewards being connected to the United Methodist Men of Morton United Methodist Church. And you can go online and sort that out, and the information is in your bulletin for that. If you have questions, we may be able to help you with that. And the script table is out here, and you can stop by on the way out and talk to them about it. Without any further announcements... Let's continue in worship, preparing our hearts and minds, thinking about the Lord and spending time in worship. Let us worship our God together.
Good morning, dear friends. Will you stand and sing with me? Come, thou almighty king. join with me in our responsive reading this morning. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with sounding cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbal. Let everything that has breath Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you. 
Try this again. There we go. If we, as we continue in worship this morning, let us worship God by the giving of our tithes and gifts and offerings. And I invite the ushers to come forward and the congregation to prepare as we offer back to God that which he has given us. Oh. 
Heavenly Father, we give you our praise. Son of God, we give you our praise. And Holy Spirit, we thank you for the gift of your presence and the many gifts in our lives that you have blessed us with. We offer this as a portion of our tithes and our gifts and our offering back into you and to your kingdom. We pray that your love would be known here in Morton and throughout the world through the ministries of this church. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. And now let us prepare our hearts for prayer time. Will you join with me in great is thy faithfulness. here this morning has been a real blessing and amazing, and I thank the Lord for that. Thank you for entering into it and being part of that. So we're going to talk about this morning. Before we do that, we want to go to prayer, and I, first of all, I want to thank um, these flowers before us are presented by the Pfeiffer family in memory of Dad and Grandpa Phil Johnson, so we thank them for this. 
Dorothy Funk, a member of our church, passed away uh, Friday night, early Saturday morning, and her funeral will be Wednesday, 10 a.m. at Tremont, Davis Oswald Funeral Home. And we want uh, continued prayers for those in our congregation. Um, we had a request for Lois Beeler and for Thelma Robertson, who has uh, now been discharged from the hospital. And I also want to update you on my father. My dad is now residing in Restmore. We had, uh, my brother and I, had some decisions to make once he was discharged from the hospital in Geneseo, and we have moved him here. So I appreciate your prayers for my dad. He is adjusting well, I believe. He deals with dementia in his life, and he is, uh, he's in good hands, and I appreciate Restmore and their ministry, their caring ministry, and many of you are very aware of that as well. So um, I'd ask for prayers for my father as well. Let's go to the Lord in prayer at this time, please. Lord, we have uh, sung this wonderful hymn of our faith, extolling and magnifying your greatness, your great faithfulness, your awesome deeds, your presence among us. And we're humbled to know that you, the Lord of all, who brought all things into existence and all have its source of being come from you that we have this morning the privilege of entering into worship with you. Your word tells us that you are seeking and looking for people who will worship you in spirit and truth and we want to be that people this morning. But not just this morning, Lord. We want that tomorrow when we wake up and go through the workplace and, and when we retire in the evenings. Our life is consumed by your presence and that we're entering into your spirit and your truth in our life <clears throat> continually. So Lord, help us to be that kind of people. Help us to be a people that longs and looks for you and the things of you uh, today and, and always. We love you. We love you. Thank you so much for loving us and demonstrating that love in Jesus. Thank you for his life, his ministry. It so aptly brings you to us in the flesh. And we begin to see the greatness and grandeur of your purposes in our life. you your. Your word reminds us that every morning there are new mercies. Every morning. And believe me, Lord, we need that. We wake up sometimes and we're, we're struggling. And we're just trying to get through the day. And we, we need to be reminded again of the new mercies that are here every morning because of your grace in our life. Thank you that your compassion never fails. Your peace and pardon as part of our life, and we have your strength day by day. Help us to draw on that as we worship you this morning, and may you be honored and glorified here in that. Lord, for these whom we've mentioned in uh, great remembrance for, uh, for Phil Johnson and grateful for his life and love in, in the Pfeiffer family, and Lord, for Dorothy's family now as they're grieving and her loss, as they prepare to uh, lay her to rest. We ask that your, your arms of grace would be around them and bring them comfort. And for Lois, for Thelma, my father, and others, Lord, who are in uh, situations in life that um, need healing and, and help, we pray that your grace will continue to be sufficient for their needs. And we know that as we intercede on their behalf, Father, things happen for your goodness. And we trust you with that. So we enter into this 
not half-heartedly, but wholeheartedly as we bring intercession for these. Lord, we know there are others upon our hearts and minds this morning we bring to your throne. And uh, we want to be your disciples, your followers, your learners. And we say to you right now, Lord, here's my mind. Here's my heart. I give that to you. And all this week, I'm going to be your disciple. Help me to have your eyes. Help me to have your heart for those around us. And help us to pray how you taught us to pray. When you said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Sounds like what I'm about to read to you. When the choir sang the uh, offertory, Thou art holy. Um, It's taken from this text that I want to read from Revelation chapter 4. This is the language of heaven. This is the uh, expression of, of uh, to God in, in, in the throne before the throne. And uh, so, hear these words and, and try to try to picture in your mind what this is, because it's very descriptive, very colorful, very explosive. Get, try to get in your mind a as we used to say, a Kodak moment. Here are these words. After this, this is John uh, writing this down what the Lord had shown him. After this, I looked and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice, which I heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, come up here and I will show you what must take place after this. At once, John writes, I was in the spirit. And behold, a throne stood in heaven with one seated on the throne. There's only one on that throne. Our problem is we try to get on that throne. There's only one on that throne. And he who sat there had the appearance of jasper and carnelian. And around the throne was a rainbow that had the appearance of an emerald. Around the throne were 24 thrones, and seated on the thrones were 24 elders clothed in white garments with golden crowns on their heads. And from the throne came flashes of lightning and rumblings and peals of thunder. And before the throne were burning seven torches of fire, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was, as it were, a sea of glass like crystal. Have you got that in your mind? Can you try to picture the glory of that? Is that going to show up up there? We've got a, we've got a, there we go. This is Pastor Gabe's drawing of the scripture text. Up at the very top is the throne. And you see the 24 elders in, the, in gold there. That's, his, that's how he was visioning this as it goes on. Here, let me continue this. And around the throne, on each side of the throne, there are four living creatures full of eyes in front and behind. The first living creature like a lion, the second like an ox. He's got those up there. A third living creature with the face of a man, a fourth living creature like an eagle on flight. And the four living creatures, each of them with six wings, are full of eyes all around and within. And day and night, they never cease to say, this is what the choir is saying, holy Holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and who is and who is to come. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and who is and who is to come. That's the language of heaven. Those are words we need to put to our lips. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and who is and who is to come. They did not say, Cubs, cubs, cubs. 
are worthy. Cardinals, cardinals, cardinals. Holy, holy, holy. And whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who is seated on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who is seated on the throne and worship him. They worship him who lives forever and ever. They cast their crowns before the throne saying, Worthy art thou, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. That is a simple rendition of the great throne of God and the worship that goes on there. It's a beautiful and a powerful moment when John gets to look into the glories of eternal worship. That's where we're headed, by the way. We've got to learn now because that's, that's what we're going to be doing for all eternity. And here you thought you are going to be golfing. Will you please pray with me? Lord, help, help us to get the big picture of your plans and your purposes in our life. So come, Lord, by your spirit and speak to us and into our hearts and uh, help us to hear what you're saying in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, friends. We get to talk about worship. When I came up a little early for the prayer. I was like, Coach, put me in the game right now. Nope, go sit down. Not yet. And uh, we, get, we, we get to worship. It's a privilege. It's necessary. It's important. And we, we have to reckon that in our life. I... Um, When my daughter was four years old, she was in her room playing with her with her toys and animal. Um, she had her dolls and her her stuffed animals, her beanie babies, all lined up on the floor. She had two two rows, like half circles, and she had a like a little some kind of a platform in front of that. And I walked in there. I go, Rachel, what, what are you doing? And she says, um, we are playing church. I really? So, so what, do you, what, do you, what, do you, what do you do at your church? And this is what she said. She said, we sing, we pray, we dance, and we listen to God. We sing, we pray, we dance. And we listen to God. That blew me away. I quickly got this card and I wrote it down right here because I wanted to hold on to this for the rest of my life. And when I think of worship, I think of that. We're a church that's wanting to love the Lord more, worship more, and serve the Lord by serving others more. The first thing I want to say this morning is we will worship. We will worship. We are made to worship. Whether we realize it or not, we worship daily. Because see, what gets our attention gets us. What gets our attention becomes part of who we are. If we worship politics, if we worship per people, we worship personalities, we work, if we worship particular people who are out in front in the world, we 
they get our attention, they get us, we become. We can worship things that are good and wonderful and great. We can worship children. We can worship the great gifts, everything that God's given us in this world. We can worship that because it's good. It was, when creation was made, it was said everything's good. But listen to what Ralph Waldo, Waldo Emerson said. He said, a person will worship something. Have no doubt about that. We may think our tribute is paid in secret in the dark recesses of our heart, but it will come out. That which dominates our imaginations, our thoughts, will determine our lives and our character. Therefore, it behooves us to be careful what we worship. For what we are worshiping, we are becoming. Last night, I, I was watching the Golden State Warriors play the Boston Celtics. Anybody see that game last night? I see that hand. One hand. All right. I like the, I, I'm a fan of the, of the uh, Golden State Warriors. I love Steph Curry. And uh, he's, a, he's a follower of Jesus, by the way. And at the end of the game, it was a really close game. It got tight at the end. And he hits a three-pointer. And the crowd, and there was something else he did, too. But the crowd just went crazy. And I wish I could have had taken a picture of this on the television because it was just an absolute... The way the, the way the camera was, it had it had Steph Curry looking up into the stands like this, and it had all. I mean, there's I don't know how many people are in this auditorium, this stadium must be fifteen to twenty thousand people, and they're just all up and they're doing this. I mean, it's just going crazy, and they're, the adulation to what he just accomplished on that court was a worship moment. It was. I mean, what else were they? They were worshiping what Steph Curry just did. It was amazing. And then I thought, what do we do on Sunday morning? Do we have that kind of worship moment for Jesus? No. No, we're looking at the clock. It's 10.09. And we're thinking about what i got to do after this, after this service. Where am I going? What am I going to do? What's going on tonight? Right? We're thinking those things. We've got to get those out of there. We get tied down to, well, I'm just in the rut and the routine of, uh, it's 9.30, I've got to be at church, got to worship, and then got to do this, and I've got to do that. But stop. We've got to stop. We've got to enter into what, the, Luke, excuse me, John 4.24 says that the Father is looking for people who will worship Him in spirit and truth. God's got His binoculars out, and He's looking around. He's looking on Morton, and He's looking right here. He's saying, who's worshiping me in spirit and truth? He's looking for people. This is, this is he's, he's wanting to uh, have us enter into that kind of, of worship experience with spirit and with truth. Isn't that wonderful? I want to sign up for that. I want to be part of that. But we're made to worship. The biblical teaching is this. To be human is to worship something greater than the self. The greater thing is what is supremely important to us. The greater thing will inexorably make us into its image. The thing we worship will become, the th we will become like that thing or that person. Whatever we worship is our source of identity, our meaning of purpose, our power, our security, everything. We become like we worship. So we have to be careful. We have to be careful. Second thing is, the Lord is worthy of our worship. When the 24 elders says in the heavenlies, when they 
they bow down, they take their crown off, they lay that before the throne, and they say, worthy are you. Axios is the Greek word there, worthy. I came across the, there's a website, there's a, I think there's even an app, and you can, can subscribe to this, this particular, it's a, I think it's a political writing kind of thing, blog, information, daily. It's called Axios. Well, that got my attention. I'm like, oh, they're using a Greek word to identify what they are. What they're in essence saying is, what we write, what we produce is worthy of you to read it. Sign up and we'll send you all kinds of stuff. And then you'll get texts on what it is. I'm not espousing one way or the other on that particular political viewpoint. I'm just saying that's what they say. And they named their company Axios. That's, they say, what we have to say is worthy of your time to take the time to read that. So there's a value judgment. You have to make, well, am I going to take the time to read that? Am I going to take the time to enter into that? And that's what worship is. It's a, it's a value. There's a value there. It's, it's a worth. It is a worth. The Lord is worthy of our worship. He is worth worshiping. In the children's sermon this morning, Pastor Amy, or, uh, Amy handed out um, coin, fake coins, to the kids. And what would you buy with this? It was interesting. One, one girl talked about technology stuff. Phone and computer. And another girl said, a bicycle, a car, a Jeep. Jeep. And uh, it, was, it was kind of like adventure stuff. See, what, what their, see where their attention is? What they value, we do the same thing, don't we? We do the same, same thing. We, have, we place a value on We have to place a value on our Lord. He is worth everything about us. He is axios for us. He, there's a value of Jesus that says, you're worth everything in my life. What price do we put on the Lord? What worth do we value in our relationship with him. Listen to what Jesus said in Matthew 10. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not axios, is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not axios, worthy of me. That's a hard thing to hear. But Jesus is saying the priority is always him. And then Jesus said, whoever does not take up his cross and follow me is not axios, is not worthy of me. So he is worth everything we have in our worship. Now this, the word for, uh, the word for the word worship is interesting. This word is compound word, pros. And listen to this. This is, it's, there's movement in it. It says toward. Pros means you move toward. And kuneo, kiss. Now, when I discovered this, I'm like, wait a minute, I didn't go to worship to kiss. You see, if, if, uh, if, I saw this recently, and I can't remember if it was in a movie or a... Was it last night in the, in the play? Didn't, didn't, did, they hold, did, the, did that prince hold out his hand, that guy, and they kissed the hand? Was that last night? I'm getting confused here. <laughs> but that's the point. Yeah, one, of the, one of the demonstrations of that. A person who is in play, a position of power, and you come to pay homage to them, you may kiss their, their ring or their hand as an as a act of... of um, of surrender or an act of acquiescence to that person or that throne. So there's an affection that has to happen in our life towards the Lord. So we can say to the Lord, olive juice. 
I mean, I love you. Olive juice. I love you. We move towards, there's a movement to the Lord. There's a movement of affection for us. Let's talk about some misconceptions about worship. First of all, worship does not only take place in a church. There's a, there's a reason why we gather together as the body of Christ. We do this for one. We need one another. We need, we need this type of experience. But worship is not confined here. It can happen anywhere. And you've had those moments, those times when you are experiencing God in, in, in good and deep ways and you're, not, you're outside of a, of a worship, worship center. Psalms 119 reminds us, seven times a day I praise you because of your righteous judgments. Seven times a day, it's a daily. Worship is something a daily. Worship is not just an outward expression. It's also an inward experience as well. But there's nothing wrong with an outward expression. I never used to raise my hands because I thought that was weird. I did. I remember the first time I was at a service and I, they said, stand up and lift your hands up and give God praise. I sat there and I said, oh, I'm not doing that. I was the only one sitting down, too. Wasn't, I, wasn't that great attitude I had? I mean, you know, it's just, I was stubborn. But I, I finally came to the point when I realized, when I, you know, the Bible talks about lifting holy hands to the Lord, it's okay. So you start off like this, you know, you're just going to go. <laughs> I'm walking out after the first service and a lady said, is it okay if I do this? I said, sure. But, you know, I, that's how I was. I was kind of like this, and then I was kind of like this, and then I was kind of like, like this. As I said before, this is the most vulnerable, vulnerable position you can be in. It's also a position of surrender, is it not? He says, somebody hit me, they could do a lot of damage if I'm in this position. It's an ultimate saying, you know, Lord, I surrender. <laughs> but there's outward expressions. There's inward expressions. Darlene Zesh writes this, True worship is not just the songs, the vocals, the band, the choir. All those things contribute to a great expression of worship. But the essence of worship is when your heart and your soul, the core of your being, connects with the Spirit of God. But sometimes that takes part of our physical act of moving towards or lifting up or laying hands. Something might involve that. But that's okay. I'll never forget one time I was in a worship service leading it, and a friend of mine came right down the aisle, and he laid prostate on the floor. He just flat out. I looked at him. But that's how he had to worship the Lord right at that moment. It's okay. He was really doing what they did in here in Acts or Revelation 4. And here's another thing, friends. Us on the platform, we're not, this isn't about us. This isn't about me or whoever's preaching. This isn't about, you know, Gabe giving announcements or the prayer or the choir or the special music or how we did communion. It's not about that. It's not about people in the pew. It's about Jesus. We have to give leadership, and that's what our role is up on this platform, but it's not about us. 
And in the pew, we, we can't have a syndrome that says, I'm just going to pray and pay and sit in the pew. Did you hear that? We can't just pray and pay and sit in pews. Worship has to be more than that. I remember... Uh, I'm watching, I'm watching, don't worry. I do that often. Now, I remember, I remember one time going back to my home church. I hadn't been there in a long, long time. And, I, you know, these people in that church are near and dear to me. And it's just, it's just a real, it was a real blessing to be there. And I remember sitting in, um, kind of in the back section, because I got there late. And, and uh, I just was kind of out of sorts. And I, I, I sat there, and all of a sudden, I started to critique. I started to think, boy, this is really dry. This is not a lot happening here. And I was starting to write things down on my bulletin of what I would do differently. And, and then it's like the Lord just broke through on this and said to me, Gary, what are you doing? Is this about you, or is this about what you you think you should get out of this, or is this about me and what you're offering me? I'm like, oh my gosh, Lord. I have been this. I I thought, what am I? You know, what what can I get out of this? I'm not getting what I thought I should get out of this. And he's like. What are you giving me? I said, I'm not giving you much of anything right now other than complaining. I'm sorry, Lord. So it's not about these positions we're in. It's about our heart. We need to be engaged. We need to be active. We need to have our hearts and minds on the Lord. Worship needs to be a central activity of any church. Acts 2 tells us that the people in the early church continually gathered in one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, and they ate food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all people. Ephesians 5 tells us, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to your, in your heart to the Lord. Worship is important. Last thing I want to say is What crowns will you lay down? What crowns will you lay down? You see, when when, uh, the scripture we read, the elders who were around the throne, they got down, I don't know, not as easy as they used to do that. And... uh, Tell you what, I started doing push-ups again. I hadn't done that in quite a while. I could hardly get through five push-ups five three weeks ago. That's crazy. But this is a good position to be in, you know, before the Lord. It's just this diff- different perspective down here than it is standing up. But they, they, they took their crowns off, and that's the important thing. They laid down a gold crown before the Lord and said, you know, this is yours. This isn't mine. What is it that you think is worth in your life that you haven't given to Jesus? That has to come down before him in worship and say, this is yours. It's about you. I give you what I have. And worship will always be expressed that way. So what crowns do you have to, we were talking about this at staff this past week, and what crowns are you going to lay down? And, and Amy had just had a crown put on her, on her tooth. Well, I can't take that one off. That's not the crown we need to give. That gold can stay there, but just what other, what other crown can you, can you give? I think my daughter was on to something. Sing, pray, dance, listen to God. Is that your heart this morning? 
Now, if you read Revelation 5, this, this says, They said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who lies and lives is to come. And in chapter 6, there's another chorus in there, but it says they sing continually. So there's talking continually and there's singing continually around the throne of God. This is just training ground for what eternity is going to be like, friends. If you're having a hard time expressing that to the Lord now, that's going to be all we're going to be doing before his throne. Nothing else we'd want to do before his throne. So work on it. Learn to worship him more in your life. Not just here, but at home. Husbands and wives, pray with one another. Read the word together and say, we're going we're to worship Jesus right now, the next 10 minutes. He's going to be Lord of our home. Hold hands. Look at each other in the eye and say, this house is a house for Jesus. And we're going to serve him and worship him. And when we do that during the week, when we come back here on Sunday, we're going to be even more revved up. That's how it works. So, will you please pray with me? Lord, help us to be your people. Help us to be people who love you and worship you, serve you. I pray, Lord, that you'll give us a wisdom and understanding of what it means to be worshipers of you in spirit and truth, that we would just love you in the midst of that. In your name we pray, amen. Let's stand and sing this closing hymn of We Will Glorify. We will glorify the King of Kings Righteousness, we will worship Him alone. He is Lord of heaven, Lord of earth. He is Lord of all who live. He is Lord above the universe. All praise to Him we Alleluia to the King of kings. Alleluia. Next week, we get to worship again. (laughs) Looking forward to it already. Have a wonderful week. Worship Him every day. He is worthy and worth all of that. So enjoy His presence. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you all. Amen.